With your first news at 10 Sports, here's Jeff Roberts. Dickinson State was one play shy of beginning the year with a win last week for the first time since 2019. A battle out in Billings gave the Blue Hawks plenty to bring back to the Queen City for week two. The group opening up North Star play against Mayville State this afternoon. The Comets coming to, uh, come to this one after losing to Montana State Northern a week ago. Dickinson State's offense starts strong as Mayville quarterback Tim Salmon has the ball stripped by Drew Mather, and we've seen plenty of that the past several years. It would stay with the Comets. Mabel's defense also came to play in the early going. Will Madler under pressure. It's caught by Comets' Anthony Johnson. Johnson takes it all the way back to deep inside the Blue Hawk territory. The INT would result in the first three points of the day. Braden Lacombe boots through a 15-yarder. It gives the Comets its first lead. All DSU needed was that kick, to, kick in the gut to get going. DSU's offense got on track its next possession. Madler finds Trinity High's Noah Sickler makes the leaping grab. That's the connection we've seen a lot. Three pays later, handoff to another Western North Dakota guy, Braden Zuroff. He beats everyone to the painted turf. Dickinson State takes their first lead. To the second set of 15 minutes, on the first play of the quarter, DSU keeps the ground game involved. Caden Kuntz, the hometown kid, punched in their second score. 14-3 at the break. Moving to the third quarter, Dickinson State gets the ball and goes to work. It's Zuroff again. This time it's tough sledding. He sneaks out of a pile, and it's just a race for the end zone. 34 yards to the house to go up three scores. The Blue Hawks ended up scoring on every drive of the second half except the last one, and it results in a huge 41-18 win over Mayville State. This was the 21st win for Dickinson State over the Comets in 22 outings in the NAIA era and 25th win in a row against North Star opponents. You Mary took the field for the first time under Shan Schillinger today. Marauders were at Augie. The first quarter was all August Shanna. Casey Bauman was the signal caller for the Vikings and had two rushing scores in the first 15 minutes. After one quarter, Augustana was up 14. It wasn't until the third when you Mary showed some life. Sofian Massoud absorbs contact, finds Majib Rufai. Rufai only needing one hand and spins in for six. On defense, one of the stops today came by way of interception. Seth Jarrett, a veteran, lays out to force the turnover. But this one ended up going to the Vikings. You Mary comes back to Bismarck a week from today to host Sioux Falls. North Dakota State played today for the first time since its loss in the FCS National Championship eight months ago. It was only the second time in a close to a dozen trips to Frisco at the Bison left without the title. The journey back to Texas started this afternoon. NDSU hosted Eastern Washington at U.S. Bank Stadium. After stopping the opening Eastern Washington drive and scoring, the Bison go back to the ground. Handoff to Tameric Williams. Somehow he stays on his feet along the sideline. He's in for six. The Bison go up 14. The Eagles would get back on offense in that first quarter. Kakoa Vesperis, he's in the backfield in the play action. He heaves it toward the end zone. It's caught by Nolan Olm for six. Eastern Washington gets on the board and trims the deficit in half. Cole Payton in that quarterback for the Bison. He keeps it on the read option. He darts away from tacklers into the open field, past the 30, the 20, the 10. Touchdown. It's the second longest run by a quarterback in the Division One era for NDSU. Later in the second, Eagles driving into the Bison territory now, going for three points, but there's a big guy up front who says not so fast. Eli Mostert blocks the kick, picks up the loose ball himself. That's the way it went the entire way. A dominant win to start the year for the Bison over Eastern Washington. The win is Matt Entz's 50th as a head coach. Up north in Grand Forks, the 17th ranked Fighting Hawks hosted Drake to start its season. We pick it up in the opening minutes of the second quarter. No score until this play. Tommy Schuster is known for high completion rate, but he shows off the legs here. It's a five-yard scamper to go up 7-0. After that first score, North Dakota found a rhythm. Next possession, first of many connections between Schuster and Bo Belquist this season. Nine-yard pitch and catch to put UND up 14. Moving to the third, the floodgates really open. On their second drive of the half, up 21, Schuster to Quincy Vaughn in the corner of the end zone. The lead was up to 28 and exponentially growing. Then the Hawks got fancy. Check out this double pitch 
over to Bo Belquist, and this is quite possibly the play of the afternoon. Somehow evades. I counted five tackles and crosses the goal line. They scored 27 points in the third quarter, and it helped them run away with a 55-7 season opening win. It's the first time the Hawks scored 50 or more points in a single game since they scored 69 against Valparaiso on August 29th of 2013. That's a lot of football, I, I know. So let's get you one last look at the first full week of college football in North Dakota. Minot State played on Thursday and fell in a barn burner. You Mary falls at Augie today, but Dickinson State, North Dakota State, and North Dakota outscore their opponents 131 to 35. We'll have more on those performances tomorrow. One high school score to report tonight. Standing Rock goes down to Pine Ridge, South Dakota, and beats Red Cloud by 50. That's all for sports tonight. We wrap up the show after the break.